Hello, everyone. So just a small sound check if everyone hears me well and sees me well and sees the presentation we are having. Yeah, if yes, please uh, write something in chat. Uh, yeah, it seems that it's fine. All right. Um, great. Awesome. Well, first of all, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for joining us at uh, the first webinar of the year. Um, I'm very excited that this webinar is a big webinar dedicated to the launch of the new uh, of the new range of products of ours of the new, entire product line, which I actually started this year. So it's about Galileo Sky 7X, and those are the new GPS trackers, programmable uh, with external antennas. So let's go one by one. So just as usual, just for those who not um, participating at our webinars oftenly, let's uh, quickly go through the for the presentation uh, and the, for, for the webinar platform, for, first of all, yeah, small uh, lineup about what we uh, on what we will talk about today. So first of all, we'll um, stress out all the advantages and technical features of the new Galileo Sky 7X. Uh, we will then uh, touch the tasks that you may solve with the new programmable trackers. And uh, we will separate several modifications which we are starting to sell. Um, Galiska 7X, 7X Plus, 7XC. So what are the main features? What are the dedications? So why we have decided to uh, make this type of devices? And uh, we will um, definitely uh, take a look at this one. So um, just a few words about webinar. Uh, as usual, it's about 45 minutes long. So the record of the webinar will be sent uh, to your email, which you have registered with uh, after the presentation ends. So as usually, you may share it with your colleagues or those of you who, have, who, who were not able uh, to, to take part online. So you will have it uh, recorded and you may take a look at this one as well. So, and all the questions that you might have during the presentation, I will answer them after our presentation ends. Uh, you may ask them in the special field called, called questions and it is placed here uh, in the right upper corner uh, of your screen. You may see the manuals, uh, the, 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 these few buttons. So, and the question is the second from the left. The chat is for you to have a chat with, your, with each other to exchange your thoughts, ideas, or to ask some questions to each other. So the questions uh, should be placed in questions tab because we can then uh, go through the questions one by one and no message would be lost. All right, uh, let's start from the from this slide. Uh, this is actually how Galileo Sky 7X looks like so seven uh means that it looks like seven so the only thing that i'm sure you have noticed is that uh is those uh two connectors uh from on on the side of it which are dedicated obviously for antennas connection so visually there are no differences but there are some differences inside uh a part of external antennas capability uh so Let's go one by one. So generally, what's different with Galileo Sky 7X? So first of all, and uh, this is the great uh, thing to announce, uh, it has two CAN buses, two CAN counters, so you can connect two CAN buses simultaneously. You know that many vehicles right now um, are using uh, two uh, CANs, and so in order to get all the parameters from those, we have to have uh, two CAN counters connected. So right now, Galileo Sky 7X is capable of doing it. Uh, I will then briefly move to the screenshot stop when to, to the configurator when we will show you how it looks like in CAN scanner. But for those who you, of you who are using CAN and who will lack in some functionality in this one, this is a great tool to enhance your, um, your opportunities to provide the solution to some new projects with the new for the new customers where some extra data should be extracted from can bus um, the another feature that uh, we should definitely 
uh, look at is that now the USB of Galileo Sky 7X is powered. So, and the power is enough for configuration and for charging the battery. So uh, it's a great tool. So you don't need to have the external power source in order to configure the device. Uh, just plug the USB connect the USB connector, and that's it. So you you, you may use configurator uh, without ex any external power. That that's that's uh, that is made for to, to make the configuration easier. So 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 for your for your convenience, obviously. Uh, the next thing that we should talk about is that now the 7X uh, firmware upgrades are done seamlessly. So we will never lose uh, any data while upgrading the firmware. So the, the, um, the firmware is upgraded in the background regime. So it means that no data uh would be lost the track will be kept drawing the data will be transferred so at the same time the firmware will be upgraded the small like maybe like like 30 seconds would be required in order to just uh restart the device but anyway um the it, it will require minimum amount of time so the customer will not even see that there is some uh some track uh, missed uh, while the the firmware was upgraded and functionality added. So a great tool for you to make uh, the firmware upgrades more easy and more frequent and more uh, useful for your customers. So, um, and another thing that we should also mention that right now, uh, all the inputs of Galileo Sky 7X are equipped with a built-in resistor. So it means that uh, you are now having the opportunity to connect external sensors without uh, having, su such as fuel level sensors, uh, flow meters, uh, gear cons, and uh, some other sensors uh, without connecting, without having external um, scheme with resistors. So now it's built-in, so which obviously enhance the uh the reliability of the solutions the less external things we have the more reliable the solution would be so and more than that obviously it uh, speed up the installation process so it, it just makes the life easier so um and another thing that also should be mentioned is that now uh, in 7x we have increased the uh maximum current of the outputs to 200 milliamperes. So it's open new opportunities for you for connection external relays of uh, higher uh, high, higher current than, than, than it used to be. So which actually, again, made for making your life easier as the installators and as the uh, service providers. So it's easier to choose from the relay in the market and it's easier to use the solution uh, for activating the output and uh, for, for, for making some actions inside the vehicle. Um, and the new thing that should also uh, be taken into consideration that 7X has Bluetooth 5.0. Now it's available for transmitting data to Exynor driver app. So the driver will see any information which is being generated by the tracker uh, inside the cabin on the screen without GSM coverage over Bluetooth. So, um, so yeah, just a very useful solution for your projects when you need to have driver informed about everything that happens with the vehicle and it's done not over GSM. So because GSM obviously uh, is tend to be lost uh, while Bluetooth would be inside of the vehicle always and the tracker will communicate with the application directly. So any data would be uh, transferred to to the screen of Exynor seamlessly without any delays uh, over Bluetooth locally. Uh, let's move to three new models, which uh, uh, we are introducing today. So, and those, uh, as I already uh, noticed, are Galileo Sky 7XC, uh, Galileo Sky 7X, is as the flagship device and Galileo Sky 7X Plus. Uh, so one by one, just briefly, 7XC is the device with a maximum number of inputs for, create, for solving the main tasks in GPS tracking. 
Um, Galileo Sky 7X is what we expect to be our flagship device, the device with dual con capability, with a lot of different uh, interfaces for connection of external peripherals with uh, such features as creating polygonal geofences, as uh, saving second by second lock on the micro SD, and all the others which are uh, widely used on Galileo Sky 7.0, for example, but enhanced with dual CAN capability. Bluetooth and um, and actually external antennas for those projects where we need to have uh, external antennas. And uh, Galileo Sky 7X Plus, uh, this is the classic in new generation or new generation of classic, if you may call, call so. Um, so the device is uh, um, like, is the ancestor of Galileo Sky version 5.0. So it has the same uh, number of inputs and outputs, the same uh, contacts and the same connector as 5.0. No differences and at all. So in case you need to replace 5.0 uh, with something, it would be the most easiest task to do with uh, 7X Plus because just plug and play. So just put the 5.0 out, uh, put 7X Plus in, and have all those features that we're lacking at 5.0 built in in 7X Plus. Uh, having the external antennas, having eight inputs, having all the interfaces uh, embedded, but also uh, adding the very powerful easy logic, CAN scanner, Bluetooth, and so on. So all the features that we're lacking 5.0. By the way, said news for someone probably that Galileo Sky version 5.0 has been discontinued. So it's no longer produced, but we have a very good replacement which, which is 7X Plus. But let's uh, move in more details one by one through the modifications. So let's start with the flagship, which is Galileo Sky 7X. So as I already have mentioned, it has uh, two CAN buses. It has Bluetooth 5.0, BLE, uh, RS485, RS232, one wire, six inputs, for it, four outputs. All the other things are quite reminding us Galileo Sky 7.0, but Bluetooth, two CAN, and external SMA antennas is what makes it special. Uh, so, um, yeah, just uh, in addition to those features that I have uh, already mentioned in the start of my presentation, like uh, powered USB, like uh, background firmware upgrades, like extended uh, current on the outputs, like the um, like, like all the other things. So it, it's a new generation of the devices uh, that have has everything best from previous versions, but we have already added some new features for giving the extra value for your customers and for you. So um, 7XC, if we will compare it with with the uh, product line of Galileo Sky 7, 7.0, I mean, uh, it is more like it is more close to 7.0 light. But uh, in addition to the functionality of 7.0 light, it also has uh, more inputs, 10 inputs, which is which I guess is the maximum of the market overall. So I've never heard of the trackers which have. Uh, so many inputs, but yeah, here we have. So you may use all of them simultaneously in different modes like analog, discrete, frequency, and pulse. So whatever whatever your task is, when you have some standardized signal coming, so you may have 10 of them, uh, which is very large amount. Uh, RS-485 can, just like at 7.0 light, uh, plus we have added one wire in it for you to make more projects based on this modification for to cover more uh, main tasks in tracking uh, like uh, driver ID or temperature sensors connection. So it also has CAN scanner, logic technology, powered USB and so on. So all the other things are quite similar, external SMA antennas as well. Uh, great, uh, next thing as I uh, noticed 7X Plus, the new generation and uh, the classic generation, let's call it so. Eight inputs, four outputs. You may uh, check uh, without the first uh, line and you may probably uh, will see the Galileo Sky version 5.0. Uh, yeah, we have added Bluetooth 5.0 in it. Uh, there is also CAN scanner, which 5.0 was lacking. Uh, there is possibility to work with more complicated scripts in EasyLogic, 
There is Exonia driver app, which could be connected locally to non SIM cards. Micro SD card now could be uh, installed uh, up to half of the terabyte, which is a terrifying number. Um, internal battery and board as well, as usual. External SMA, SMA antennas and all those user useful features uh, like echo driving with instant feedback for the driver, voice communication, auto informer, and polygonal geofences, and uh, so, so on. So, yeah. Everything that you might need in your projects, uh, including Tah Tahoe Gross connection, including refrigerator control, is built in 7, in 7X Plus. So, um, and it's a pin to pin compatible solution with uh, 5.0. Uh, yeah, here we have detailed uh, specifications of all three units uh, 7X7. A 7xc uh, 7x and 7x plus uh, left from left to right so as mentioned analog inputs uh, from 10 to 6 to 8 different modica modifications have different amount of inputs uh, it's actually um, because of the number of contacts in the connector we use is limited but we use full of them on all three modifications so in 7xc we have 10 inputs in 7x we have six inputs two can buses rs232 uh, in 7x plus we have eight inputs can bus rs232 uh, so all the other things are pretty similar in all the all, in all the three modifications uh, as mentioned all all the inputs from 6 to 10 are having a built-in resistor to plus 2.7 volts so as mentioned gives opportunity to get rid of external uh, schemes with resistors when you when it comes to such uh, sensors as the flow meters or uh, some so, some actual actuators or whatever uh, the sensors that require the external resistance um then the number of outputs is four for all three modifications but the current supply is uh, increased to 200 milliamperes the battery is there as well it's as usual 600 milliamperes per hour average average consumed power is quite identical uh acp is, is the same can inputs is what different between 7x and 7x plus so we have two uh, can inputs for 7x and one for 7x plus rs45 is made everywhere bluetooth uh we have it on 7x and 7x plus modification we don't have it in 7x c um the maximum storage is uh, 170,000 points more than that for 7x and 7x plus which are equipped with micro sd slot you may have up to uh, 2 million 500 points per GB so which is quite vast number having in mind that the maximum capacity of uh, micro SD is half of the terabyte uh, yeah and then again one wire everywhere RS232 for 7x and 7x plus just like micro SD operating temperature range is the same as usual uh, it's very essential and crucial thing for us while we're developing the trackers it should be as wide as possible so we have minus 40 to plus 85 everything that exceeds those values actually um th those things are made for armies and cost a lot of money so uh, for for uh, civil uh, applications this is the maximum that that exists uh, power supply voltage is the same, 9 to 39 volts. Uh, tracker output current is from minus 900 to plus, plus 200 volts. And the dimensions are mentioned on the screen. So it's also almost the same as for 7.0. The only thing that has changed is that we have the external uh, connectors, um, which are SMA for antennas, for GPS GLONASS, and for GSM antennas as well. Uh, okay. So there are a few new configurator features uh, which have been added to 7x because of the difference that uh, that were made on the hardware part. First of all, uh, the on the on the protocol tab of the configurator now you have the opportunity to choose the packet uh, which is sent through Bluetooth in order to transmit the uh, crucial information to Exina. Um So yeah, you may see it on the screen. It's quite 
I guess, user-friendly and understandable. So those parameters that should be set, um, they are set on the Bluetooth packet. And the uh, frequent update rate, uh, which uh, the device transmit data through Bluetooth, is uh, displayed here. Next steps for us in developing the Bluetooth functionality would be adding the uh, integration with different types of Bluetooth sensors, such as fuel level sensors, such as temperature, humidity, uh, driver ID sensors. So all types of sensors that exist on the market and uh, which are widespread, widespread amongst our partners. We have our plans on, on, on increasing the number of, of supported uh, eventually. But right now, Bluetooth at the start, at the starting stage is there on the hardware side, uh, available for uh, transmitting data to Xiner driver app. And then by the by breaking the firmware or uploading the script, we will have the integration with extra sensors. Um, and the dual CAN capability actually. So yeah, I guess the general information would be available on the screen. It's more than enough to understand how it will look like. Uh, I guess we will dedicate uh, some future webinars in order to uh, highlight the new features which we have already deployed or are deploying uh, in CAN scanner. Uh, but uh, overall, uh, yeah, just a few few highlights about uh, what, what what is it about uh, with two CAN buses. So it looks like that. Uh, so on the upper side, you see the, um, the 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 field for configuring the filter types for each uh, CAN line, uh, also the speed, also the receive timeout, and all the data which have been deployed for one CAN bus, now they deployed for two. And the same thing uh, is done on the on this uh, side of the CAN scanner tab. So each parameter which is being transmitted is being displayed in this log, and the data and and, and we actually showcase from which CAN which ID have been received. So uh, th there are some useful tools. So you can, for example, hide uh, data from one of the CAN bus just to leave uh, on only one and some other things, but uh, we will definitely talk about it in details uh, on the future uh, webinars, which would be special dedicated to Canvas and our enhancement in these parts. So I guess uh, this is it. Uh, we have some time for your questions in case you have some, I'm sure you are. Uh, just, um, yeah, feel free to ask those if you have some on the questions tab. All right, either I was so clear or you didn't understand me at a lot. So, but yeah, just. Uh, the question on the chat up from Mr. Serge Guerrero. Uh, why the limitation of digital analog inputs 39 volts? Actually, the limitation of uh, digital analog inputs is from 0 to 33 volts. Uh, the limitation of 39 volts is for uh, the uh, the power of the device. So I mean that uh, for for the external power with, the, with which device is powered. Uh, so we, we usually face 12 and 24 volts. Sometimes on some vehicles it is slightly increased. So we have slightly higher value for that. But um, uh really so we don't often see the objects with 48 volts but if you have them you may use some external schemes i'm i'm sure in order to uh to to, to get the voltage um to, to to the preset value to, to to the required value actually so in case you have any troubles with that uh just feel free to uh contact our support they know how to do that in details uh, but uh, yeah, in, in but yeah, in, in vehicles application, to be honest, so 12 and 24 are standard. 40, 48, I'm agree. With, I, I can agree with you that are uh, widespread in some stationary objects. 
uh, and this is where our partners are widely using Galilee Sky equipment. But usually, uh, the the required voltage is uh, set with some external schemes. And yeah, just uh, I guess this is the question that should be discussed with our support. I don't think that there are, should be a lot of trouble with that. All right. Any other questions? Yeah, just to highlight once again about the main differences of the trackers. 7XC actually uh, is a quite a remarkable device. To be honest, this is more from the light segment, so it looks like 7.0 light with the feature set. But 10 inputs, come on, yeah, I've never seen that. But this is uh, this would be uh, just uh, small inside the cheapest modification in order to get the pricing for 7x. Uh, please send your request either to responsible manager for your, for your region or to sales at 7gis.ru. We will share it. Uh, but uh, and the, uh, the device are already available on stock. So they are available for your orders and uh, the sales have already been started and uh, we have a good feedback about them. Um, so the, yeah, next question with from uh, Mr. Ricardo Hernandez. Um, the question from Mr. Ricardo Hernandez, uh, the devices are 3G. Currently, uh, those three modifications which I have uh, displayed today, presented today, they are 2G. But uh, our closest, very closest um, plans to enhance 7X with 3G and LTE. So it would be available week to week. So um, this is the product line which we plan to develop with different types of modifications. And 3G and LTE are right now on our pi pipeline. And we, uh, we, we are already testing actually those devices uh, internally. So once we finish with it, uh, we will be able to share the, the all the details about it. But all, all, over, overall, the feature set and uh, the, the technical specifications would be absolutely the same for 2G and 3G modifications. So as you see, 7XC, 7X and 7X Plus, they will be available either in 2G or 3G or LTE. So just you as the customer would be, your customer actually would be free to decide which standard of uh, communication they would go with 2G, 3G or 4G. So the closest plans and the closest uh, thing we will launch would be 3G and LTE for 7X. Uh, the next question on the question stop from Mr. Alistair Graham, if the 7.0 to be discontinued, no, it will be not. The only thing that is discontinued, the only device which is discontinued is 5.0. 7.0 are right now our flagship units, uh, which is uh, the most demanded amongst our partners due to feature set and the flexibility of usage. And um, we are not having any plans to discontinue it right now because simply 7X has external antennas, 7.0 internal. So we probably will uh, move 7X to internal antennas in some uh, future plans. But right now we have all only external. Uh, and yeah, 7.0 will just take some time. It, it, it will be just, uh, I guess for, for some time it will stay our flagship as well. Um, 7X, I, I'm not sure if it will move it from, from, from its position. Uh, let's hope so, but um, we, we don't have any plans to discontinue 7.0 for sure. Just like base block, to be honest. All right, uh, we have some minutes left. Uh, yeah, I think there should be some questions. Yeah, please go ahead.
Anyway, if there are no, um, if there are no, I'll, I'll see something. Uh, this question from Mr. Serge Guerrero: If the new version works on USB with antennas connected, um, I didn't understand uh, the question quite well. If I understand correct, uh, the question is: If the device would transmit the data only powered with USB, uh, the answer would be: Yeah, we have SMA. Uh, yeah. The device would not uh, transmit data while connected with USB because um, because actually yeah, the USB power would be enough only for uh, charging the battery or uh, configuring configuration. So we will not be able to transmit data uh, or switch on the GSM module only powered by USB probably only in the ideal conditions where we will have 100% the best coverage in the world. Um, but um, overall, yeah, in most of the cases it will not work. So um, the, the USB is now for configuration. So you as the user might have the device connected on your desk through USB and just uh, make some configuration without connecting the external power. Yeah, it, it becomes more convenient, obviously. So because for previous modification, in order to just configure the device, you should either install it inside the vehicle, either have some external power source uh, connected to the device uh, in your facility, in your office. Um, but right now, just plug USB and just make your configuration. Upload it, the ready-made, or draw the script download it to the tracker, whatever. So no external external power required. Yeah, it, it, and by the way, it probably would be now for, uh, for, for locating, for location, for GPS module. Uh, the question from Mr. Toshiaki Adachi. Do you work and connect from one CAN bus line to two CAN port? Uh, no, not this way. So some vehicles in this world, for some reasons, have several uh, can lines. So, for example, if I'm not mistaken, those are recent Volvos. They are having two J1939 lines. So in order to extract all the important information uh, which has been transmitted uh, through CAN bus, uh, we need to have two CAN ports. Uh, so for those projects, actually, when we have uh, two, 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 two can lines at the vehicle, uh, yeah, we have created the solution. I hope I understood, I understood the question well and answer it correctly. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, sorry. Um, so I guess, yeah, yeah, the, the remark from Mr. Sergio Guerrero, if it works in the car on USB, it works for configuration, not for tracking. Uh, it, it will work, it will maybe even store some data and even store the track but um, it will be not transmitted. So in most of the cases, it will not be transmitted, just stored. Uh, but probably for some application, it is enough. Okay, I guess um, these are all questions for now. Uh, anyway, in case you have some personal question or some question which you forget to ask us or some question which been, which would be asked by uh, one of your colleagues while they will be watching the record of this session, 
uh, we are free to answer those. Uh, our technical support team might jump, might jump in or just send us the message, request, whatever. Um, yeah, we will answer all, the, all of them. The devices are available right now. They are available for your tests. They are available for your uh, projects. So in case you have certain requests for functionality, which we have uh, described during this presentation, or in case you would, would like to present to your customers something very new, something very unique and something very uh, standing out of crowd, and which will be, uh, yeah, th that will be a good option for you to present them to. So in case you were lacking the functionality of 7.0 when it was not having Bluetooth or the, when the internal antennas would not fit the project requirements, The new, with the new device, with the, with the new generation, and enhance your um, your fleet management system. So yeah, multiple applications which you might use the new devices at uh, stationary objects, uh, uh, freight transportation, agriculture, refrigerating. So whatever. Um, yeah, please go ahead. Thank you anyway for joining us today. Uh, we will stay tuned for st stay tuned for the new webinars which are coming uh, on February. I guess uh, we will have a lot of interesting things added uh, this year, based on the new modification as well. It, it gives us a lot of new opportunities which we which we can actually convert into the value for for our um, mutual customers, where we will have the opportunity to, to get extra. Uh, features and stand out the, uh, out of the crowd even more. So yeah, thank you for joining us as usual. Thank you for taking your time uh, for having this presentation. Um, let's um, stay in touch. Let's exchange the uh, opinions. Let's uh, share your vision on what should we do next and where should we go at. Uh, so yeah, we, we are coming from the partners uh, we are doing it for the partners. So yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Bye.